Okay, good evening. If you're just tuning in, we just started our broadcast. And our services will begin in about three minutes at 6 p.m. Okay, we've got uh, a few listening already. We've got David and Alice, Jean, and Jerry and Sherry. Certainly good to have all of you. About one minute, and our services will begin. Kathy's listening, tuned in and waiting, she says. Well, about a minute. We've got Stuart, Mark, Andrew, and Sherry. So we've already got a good crowd online. And anyone else who uh, may be listening hasn't contacted me. We're having a lot of listeners far beyond our number here at Mufferville. And I uh, appreciate each one listening and uh, your interest. And I hope that you'll find a good basic gospel teaching here, to not only on our devotionals, but our full services on Sunday. So if anyone does wish to contact me, uh, the number you see there on your screen on the website, that is my text number, and you can just text me there. Okay, it's just a few seconds till six. I haven't heard from Larry yet. He may have gotten busy with something. But, uh, <clears throat> all right, it is six o'clock. It's certainly good to have all on this evening. And we've got Lauren listening, and Larry is calling. Okay, we've got Larry online, so we just added him, and we just added Lauren. So we've got a really good crowd tonight of the ones I know, and probably some others. As always, these devotionals are about eh, probably about 20 minutes long, 15 to 20. I like to keep it in between that. In light of this morning's lesson, which I'm going to reference, then reference sort of a, the opposite of that, of losing our treasure, will be the lesson tonight, but our first song will be number 226, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. If you're singing from the new book, which we are, uh, the words are a little different, but uh, just follow along if you have the book. And just a reminder, I don't put the words on the screen because of the copyright of the songs. Number 226, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mound, I'm fixed upon it. Mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer. Hither by thy help I've come. 
and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. O oh, to grace how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. No wonder, Lord, I feel it prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Okay, we added Sandy to our list of listeners this evening. I'm going to quickly reference what that we looked at uh, this morning as far as our lesson. Our lesson focused on Colossians 2, 3 and about treasures and laying up treasures in heaven. In Colossians 2, and you have to look at verse uh, 2 to see who he's talking about. He talks about, and of Christ here, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. We talked about all the treasures in Christ, uh, the, of any wisdom and knowledge, all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You know, that's all com totally comprehensive. It's all of them are in Christ. And I'm just giving a quick reminder, maybe for those who weren't, uh, able to hear this morning and we quickly referenced how that you will have a treasure map you might see in a children's book or in a movie where they're looking for treasure and uh, transversing you know storms and you see a skull mountain here uh, you know various aquatic animals and they're trying to get to the treasure even this one here has similar things but it has here be dragons beware and I thought how spiritual that is because for us to get to Christ we have to go around and defeat the great red dragon which is Satan and of course in classic literature about pirates and treasury and booty and the such like there's always the phrase X marks the spot and we talked about how that the name of Christ begins with what we would call an X it looks like an X and I find that interesting because for us to find the treasure of Christ, X marks the spot. And we uh, can find that treasure by looking for Christ. So that was basically the lesson this morning. But what happens if we're not serving the Lord? What about our treasures? Micah 6.10 will be, this morning's lesson was meant to be the lesson tonight. But I had so much more material that I wanted it to be a full lesson that more could see. And so I thought this counter verse would be a good verse to close out with tonight. Micah 6.10 Are there yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked and the scant measure that is abominable? He talks about the wicked having treasure. And are there going to be treasures in the house of the wicked? And the scant measure that is abominable, the measure they've been using to cheat people, no doubt, to get these treasures, that's talked about much. And, of course, the answer is understood. They might have some worldly treasures for a while, but there are no spiritual treasures in the house of the wicked. As we looked at in Colossians, all treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ, but we can lose that treasure by being wicked. Then he says, Shall I count them pure with the wicked balances and with the bag of deceitful weights? Can we be pure if we do things to obtain our riches? This is talking about physical riches here with wicked balances and a bag of deceitful weights. The Bible warns against those that use deceitful weights and got their money by ill gain. And so... You can't count them pure, and so we'll lose the uh, treasures of Christ if we use wickedness to obtain treasures upon this earth. It says, For the rich men thereof are full of violence, 
and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lie, have spoken lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. He's just talking about things that are done. The, there, it's going to be taken away from them. Uh, the rich men, but they're doing violence. They've spoken lies. Their tongue is deceitful. And if you heard or were at um, our 12 o'clock service, it was about James 3 and the sins of the tongue and controlling our tongue. Micah 6, 13. Therefore also will I make thee sick and smiting thee and making thee desolate because of thy sins. So he said he's going to make us sick. He's going to strike them, it says here in the American Standard Version, with a grievous wound. They're not going to be able to enjoy their riches, their ill-gotten gains, because the Lord is going to strike them. And though this verse is talking about the physical riches they obtained, I think we could talk about the riches of Christ as well. If we're not living for the Lord, remember what Colossians 2 said, that uh, in verse 3, that all the treasures of wisdom are in Christ. It's uh, It says they're hid, we had to look for them, and that's natural a treasure. You know, a treasure like I showed on those maps, it's not going to be just setting out on the ground. It has to be looked for and found and searched and dug for. But the tr- all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ. So if we're out of Christ, he's going to make us sick. He's going to make us desolate because of thy sins. As a matter of fact, uh, Proverbs talks about a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. The sinner is giving up his wealth. For To whom? To the just. I don't know all that will entail, but certainly we have treasures in heaven. The sinner has no treasures. And then he goes on in Micah. Thou shalt eat, but not be satisfied. And thy casting down shall be in the midst of thee. Thou shalt take hold, but shalt not deliver. And that which thou deliverest will I give up to the sword. Because of their sins, they weren't going to have anything. This first phrase, thou shalt eat but not be satisfied, made me think of a verse in Isaiah. Isaiah 29. It says, it shall be, this is the only time the church, well, Jerusalem is referred to, I'll go back a little bit, by a name that's not anywhere else in the Bible. Ariel. Uh, I'll look that up real quick so you can see that. But Ariel uh, means line of God or Linus of God. It's a name applied to Jerusalem. And so it means the line of God. That's interesting that this word that the Lord used in Hebrews, Ariel, talks about the line of God. And Jesus in Revelation 5 is called the line of the tribe of Judah. But he's talking about anyone who would distress the people of God or Ariel here, and this is the only chapter that Ariel is referenced. But he says, those who distress the righteous, Ariel, it shall be as when a hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he awaketh, and his soul is empty. So you can dream of good food, you wake up, you're still hungry. Or, as when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, But he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and so hath appetite. So if you're against God's people, if you're in sin, your hunger and thirst is like dreaming to eat, dreaming to drink, but you still wake up with the needs. They're never going to be filled except in your dreams. And that's not satisfactory. You know, the world... They think that living the way they're going to, promoting sin, doing sin, they're they're just dreaming. And this passage supports that kind of language. It's just a dream to them. There's not going to be any satisfaction for the wealth, for, for the wicked. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Zion. That's God's people, but those who are outside of God's people, that they're just dreaming if they think they're going to be fulfilled and victorious but back to Micah thou shalt eat but not be satisfied and thy casting down shall be in the midst of thee you're going to be cast down it says right here hunger shall be in your midst you're going to be like gnawing in your very middle which we do physically and thou shalt take hold but not deliver you're not going to be able to rescue anything you have and that which you do deliver will I give up to the sword He's going to take everything they have 
because of their sins. Just two more verses in this chapter. Thou shalt sow, but thou shalt not reap. Thou shalt tread the olives, but thou shalt not anoint thee with oil. And sweet wine, but shalt not drink. We've seen this in some of the other prophets, very similar language. They're working hard, they're sowing, they're treading out the olives. Uh, they're and talking about you know get, getting sweet wine, but they're not going to reap or have the oil or drink of the wine. Everything that the wicked do is for naught. It's for nothing. Uh, it is, back to Isaiah, it's just a dream, and it will come to nothing. But we have treasures laid up in heaven. In the last verse tonight, For the statutes of Omri are kept, and all the works of the house of Ahab. They were kings of Judah and Israel. And he walked in their counsels. Of course, Ahab was very wicked. Uh, he was His wife was Jezebel. No one, and she really, uh, I want to look, show these up to you. Omri uh, was the king of the northern kingdom of Israel. And then, of course, Ahab, you're far more probably familiar with that name. He was king of Israel. Uh, as I said Judah, but what, they both are listed as kings of Israel. And so I'm, I'm just reading here a little bit. He was the husband of Jezebel, and you know how wicked she was. Her name even has the name of a false god in it, Baal, Jezebel. Her father's name was Ethbaal. And, and he married into this family of false gods. For the statutes of Omri are kept, and all the works of the house of Ahab, and you walk in their counsels. This is after returning back from Jerusalem. You're still following the false gods of these kings. Thou should make thee a desolation, and the inhabitants thereof in hissing. You know, just that uh, that people just, you know, a sound against them, a hissing. Therefore you shall bear the reproach of my people. They don't have any treasures. Everything's taken away because of following sin. Because all treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ. So there's no treasures outside of Christ at all that last. Oh, people of the world may get some trinkets for a while, some gold, silver, uh, lands, uh, other wealth. But they have it for how long? A few years at most. It's all eventually going to be melted at, with fervent heat at the end of time. The only treasures that last are those that are laid up in heaven as we looked at. Jesus had said more than once, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Because there are no treasures of wisdom and knowledge outside of Christ. They are all in Christ. In a moment we're going to sing... Uh, 957, I'm not sure I announced it uh, or not, but this world is not my home. I think I'll go ahead and sing all this song because it's only now just 615. We'll sing the song and then we'll have some closing announcements. And if you have anything that you'd like for me to announce, you can send it during this song and I'll make the announcements uh, at the end. 957, this world is not my home. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know He'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drifts back from heaven's shore, and I can't feel at home 
in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Okay, we uh, didn't receive any more announcements, and I happen to think earlier, I, I see our YouTube count is uh, certainly lower now than the total will probably be, and there's probably people that listen later, and you know, a lot of people, and other time zones, even the other side of the world where it's not a good time to listen live, people listen later. And uh, so I know we do get quite a few listeners, uh, much more than is shown, because the count really goes up during the week. And I hope that if anyone needs to obey the gospel, you'll study the things on our site. Uh, I will just do this real quick, since I know we have a lot of listeners. But each bulletin on the back has the plan of salvation. I always include that in each bulletin. So I hope you'll read over that, text, or even call with any questions you might have and that you'll obey the gospel of Christ. Continue to remember those who are sick. Alice with her uh, kidney stone surgery on March 11th and hopefully uh, not too long as soon as she's able after that will be hip replacement surgery. Continue to remember Stuart Franklin's mother, who is uh, going to Dayton, Ohio, for chemotherapy. Sandy's recovering nicely from her hip replacement surgery. She's listening tonight. And Lauren is as well, and Alice. And uh, continue to remember Lauren in prayer. Rick Gibbs and Jerry Reynolds. Today, Elaine said he was doing pretty good. I didn't receive any more announcements, so let us uh, let me remind you to, uh, we'll have a devotional again, uh, online only, Wednesday evening at 6 p.m., and then, of course, next Lord's Day at 9 o'clock Central, we'll be meeting in person. Let us close with a prayer. Our fathers, we come to thee in prayer. We're thankful for this beautiful Lord's Day that we have. Uh, n warmer temperatures than average for this time of year. Very comfortable. Looks like a comfortable week coming up. We're thankful we could spend the day in worship to you. Forgive us of our sins. Be it those we just mentioned who are sick. Be it people as they get out and travel and come and go. This week, give them safety. We pray that you'll be with anyone who is listening, especially those who need to obey the gospel. They'll give careful consideration to this and obey while there's opportunity. Forgive us of our sins, protect us, and finally save us all in heaven. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.